The winter holiday season in Scotland has always been a little odd. In the early days of the country, we would follow many of the old Celtic traditions, such as great fires, feasts, village gatherings, gifts to the she, and celebrating the many days of Yule. Eventually these traditions would become intermingled with the celebration of the Christian God. Once Christianity was involved, the festivities became far more restrained, and for many years Christmas was more of a small occasion, far less important and less celebrated than Easter. During the Reformation of the Scottish Church, the Winter Christ Mass was officially banned by Parliament in 1640, as it was too closely associated with Old Catholicism. This is one of the main reasons we in Scotland celebrate Hogmanay, or the New Year, with such enthusiasm, as for a long time it was our only winter holiday. All this to say that Christmas in Scotland has always been a very culturally mixed affair, and is unique to this great land. Today we look at a tale from the 14th century that took place on the very eve of Christmas. The Yule Beggar Many years ago, on the Scottish borders, near Dumfries, there was a shepherd who lived in the wild countryside. As it was nearing Yule, the shepherd decided to journey to town in order to join the Yule celebrations. In his absence, he would leave a young herd boy in charge of the ewes. With his master gone, the boy spent most of the day in his small clay hut, taking all the warmth from the fire that he could. Then, as the sun began to set, he went to work. The shepherd had left very strict instructions for the boy. All the sheep were to be rounded up and taken in before dusk fell, for in the darkness they could be easily lost or attacked by wolves or foxes. Trekking out into the snow-covered hills, the young boy began to round up and pen the sheep for the night. With the sheep now in, the boy took count and found that there was one ewe missing so once more he headed over the hills looking for the lost sheep. He searched and searched, but could find no signs of the missing ewe. As light began to fade, the words of the shepherd echoed in his mind, and he meant not to let his master down, so onward into the icy dark the boy went. For hours he wandered in the blackness, with his search becoming more bleak by the minute, his boots were filled with icy water from the bogs. His face and hands were cold and bloody from the briars and nettles he stumbled through. Eventually, the boy gave up all hope of finding the sheep and returned to his little hut so he may warm his bones and thaw his feet for the fire. Soon the winter moon would rise and he thought to himself that perhaps in the moonlight he would have more hope of finding the ewe. Then suddenly he remembered that the well of St. Ringan was not far from his home, and people would often journey there in times of trouble to ask the saint for his aid. And not only that, the boy remembered that it was Christmas Eve, and as the old tradition goes, St. Ringan would return to Scotland during the Yule season, and on Christmas Eve he was said to be found in Galloway. This may be the perfect time to seek such help. The boy for a moment was overjoyed, before reality brought him back to earth. The saint only helps proper folk, thought the boy. I doubt he would care for a ragged-haired boy, and I have nothing to bring to the well as a gift. All the boy possessed was the clothes in his back and a single bowl of uncooked porridge that the Scots call bros. It did not seem to him that either the ragged clothes or the bros would be a fitting gift for a saint. And besides that, the bros was all he had to eat, 
till his master returned. Eventually, the guilt of losing the ewe grew too heavy for the boy, and whether starving or not, his only option was to offer the meal to St. Ringan's well and hope for aid. The young boy warmed the porridge oats and then carried the bowl carefully through the darkness to the stone edge of the well. There he kneeled and begged St. Ringan to help him find the lost ewe. When the plea was finished, the boy stood and noticed that nothing had changed. There was no ewe before him, no bleating could be heard in the distance, only the light of the moon and stars winding its way through the trees above. Disheartened and bitterly cold, the boy turned to head back to his hut with a final forlorn look at the steaming oats on the edge of the well. He had not gone but ten paces when he heard the snap of a twig behind him. Turning, he saw a thin, ragged man sitting on the edge of the well, sipping at the bros. The boy was taken aback and began to protest. Those oats were left for a saint, not some tattered beggar. But thinking better of it, the boy held his tongue. If the saint had ignored him, then at least the oats were not put to waste. The beggar waved at the boy. It's a grand night, laddie. Only wish it was, replied the boy. I've lost one of my master's ewes. Some wild animal will kill it in the nacht, or it will stray so far I will never find it by morning. Do not worry yourself, said the man. It's not so far away. You'll find your lost sheep tangled in the bramble bushes in the deep ditch beneath yon trees that I was bloom first in the spring. The boy shook his head. I've already searched there many times. The ewe's not there. Well, I think you best check again, said the beggar, for that's where you'll find her. The boy was not greatly pleased with the advice, but nonetheless, when the beggar had finished the bros, both he and the boy went to the brambles the man had suggested, and to the herd boy's utter astonishment, there was the ewe, caught in the spines and the thorns of the bush. The boy ran down into the ditch and struggled through the sharp brambles. Upon reaching the sheep, he heaved and pulled, but the poor beast could not be moved. The beggar then joined the boy in the ditch, and together they pulled. Wool split and stems broke, as the sheep was eventually hauled out. The ewe was exhausted and freezing. It had not the power to stand, and so slumped upon the ground. The boy in tears knew he couldn't lift the sheep home. It will die here, said the boy, and I don't know how to help it. The beggar, looking at the poor sheep, bent down, and grasping the ewe, draped it over his shoulders, and began trudging in the direction of the boy's hut. Eventually the beggar and the boy reached the fire within the hut, and lay the ewe beside it. The beggar was now chilled to the bone by the icy bogs, cut and bleeding by the brambles, and tired and sore from carrying the sheep. Thank you, said the boy. Will you please stay here for the night? I've no food, but you're welcome to my fire. Thank you, laddie, for your kind offer, said the beggar. But I must be going, or I'll be late. Where are you going at this time of night? questioned the boy. It's near midnight, and you're in no state to travel. Where? exclaimed the man somewhat confused. To Bethlehem, of course. Where else would I be gone on Christmas night? As the man made this final remark, the boy was piling wood upon the fire, and as he turned in shock, the beggar was nowhere to be seen. Quickly the boy ran to the door and stared out over the moonlit hills. The beggar had gone, but there by the rising moon was a glittering pathway leading from the boy's hut far into the east. Thank you for listening, and I wish you all the best for the coming year. And as we say in Scotland, lang may your lum reek. I would also like to give a special thank you to my patrons for supporting the channel and helping me to continue to release this content. It really means a lot, especially at this time of year. Thank you. The basis of this tale 
the legends of St Ringan are incredibly old. St Ringan is another name used in Scotland for St Ninian, apostle to the Southern Picts. St Ninian founded the great Celtic monastery at Whithorn in 397 AD and essentially brought Christianity to the south of Scotland. It was thought that he would return to Galloway every Christmas Eve to aid the people he had converted. Specifically, he is seen as the patron saint of lost things, and oddly, he seems to have specialised in the finding of lost sheep. There are hundreds of tales from all around Scotland of shepherds appealing to him to aid in the finding of a lost ewe, but only on very few occasions did the ancient saint ever manifest himself physically, and it was thought he would only do so for particularly pious shepherds, such as those found in the Gospels. The herdboy's hut was said to sit near the western edge of the modern Castle Douglas, and unfortunately the well and the ditch where the sheep was found are no more. There were many locals that remember the well and the ditch all the way up until the 20th century. In 1920, the ditch was drained and filled, and the well was covered over, as that is now the location of the Castle Douglas Golf Course. Sadly, one more little part of our history gone, but at the very least, we can keep it alive by telling the story. And until next time, I hope you all enjoy the holiday season, and don't forget to tell a few tales by the fire this winter. Slang Javah.